Hello, fellow Earth people. I'm so glad you're tuning in for this interesting challenge to see if we can find a week's worth of groceries at a conventional grocery store, which who knows if it'll even work, but first some obligatory background info. So we usually get most of our groceries from our neighborhood co-op, which specializes in local and organic and natural options. Plus they have a lot of package free and ethical stuff. Or we go to Whole Foods where, to my surprise, a great deal of the conventional produce and pantry staples are very reasonably priced. Or I should say are accessible with mine and reach shared income, which is below the poverty line, but we're child free and have numerous privileges. So our incomes go a long way. Or we go to Sprouts, which has a huge bulk selection, but it's 15 minutes away. So we don't go super often, maybe about once a month to stock up on uh, bulk spices and nuts, etc. You can't beat their prices and it's very easy to shop zero waste there. However, the closest grocery store to us is actually just a regular ass grocery store called Food Lion. Uh, in terms of quality, it's not the best, it's not the worst, it just is. We do pop in there sometimes if we run out of soy milk or need some emergency pasta and cardboard, but I've never really had a great look around to be honest. Kinda just assumed I wouldn't be able to find much without excess packaging, but I wanna put that hypothesis to the test and take you with me to see what kind of zero waste and vegan comestibles we can corral. Hopefully for not more money than we're used to spending. So I'm thinking $5 per din with excess to spare. We love a good multi-layered low stakes challenge, but honestly, I have no idea what to expect. So we'll just have to improvise. Uh, <laughs> can't wait to see how that goes. My, 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 what do we have here? All right, focus. Organic producers love to ensconce their precious veggies in plastic. At a glance, it looks like the package option is cheaper, but nope, they're priced individually, whereas the conventional zucchinis are per pound. Local sweet potatoes, we love to see it. I actually dislike sweet potatoes, but I'll choke them down for the earth, why not? Def needs some onions, so let's compare. Three pounds of packaged red onions on sale for $3, compared to $1.19 per pound unpackaged. So it's cheaper to get the packaged onions in this case, but usually it looks like the ones without plastic would be a little cheaper. I was actually expecting to find local peaches on sale, but all they have is California peaches. No fair trade avocados, Kel Surprise, no naked cauliflower, which isn't uncommon, so broccoli it is. These look nice. 149 for a head of lettuce that weighs about a pound and a half compared to packaged localish, not even organic lettuce, that's $5.99 for a third of the amount. $2.79 for two organic tomatoes in plastic versus $1.79 per pound. So the organic tomatoes are literally over double the price. Zero waste for the win. Loose jalapenos are $1.49 a pound versus $1.79 a bag, but the bag is only 12 ounces, no brainer. Pro tip for buying things like grapes and cherries that usually always come in those zippered plastic bags, you can totally take out just as much as you need and put them in your own bag. I've done it dozens of times and no one's ever scolded me. In no dimension am I going to buy $16 worth of cherries that will just go bad before I can eat them all. Now onto the pantry staples. I did not know you could get canned okra. I thought they only came frozen. Ooh, dressing single, oh God. I'll take a hard pass. Pasta and cardboard gold mine. Can't decide which ones to get. This was the cheapest glass peanut butter in stock. Prunes and cardboard? Let's do the shake test. Bummer, plastic inside. Size, still better than individually wrapped prunes. No option for fair trade coconut milk. Don't need spices, but it looks like they have a lot in glass with metal lids. Heck yeah, our fancy co-op doesn't even sell kosher salt in a paper box. So $2 for three pounds compared to $3 for one pound in plastic. Let's check out and get back to the ranch so we can see what we got. So here's the goods. And I gotta say my low expectations kind of paid off because I'm not super disappointed in this haul. But let's be honest, low expectations usually always pay off. There's a life hack for you. 
free of charge. So we ended up getting soy milk because zero waste challenge or not, this is where we get a lot of our vitamins like B12 and as they say, health trumps zero waste. Plus these containers are actually recyclable in my city, so made an exception. Broccoli is a must. Mustard greens, I'm super excited about these because I don't think I've ever been able to find them before, so that's awesome. The lettuce, some bell pepper for color, carrots, uh, bananas, we got, I think five bananas. Um, we tried to get all the, uh, the single bananas they had because I read that um, single bananas are harder to sell and they usually uh, go to waste. And it makes sense because I mean, look how old these look. Like no one wants to buy these, but we can just make smoothies. So many different types of legumes, which will be our main protein source this week. And cherries on super sale for $2.99 in our own bag. Obviously this isn't completely zero waste since they originally came in plastic and we only took as much as we needed. But I feel like it somehow counts, even though I can't explain my logic in English. Par cooked rice was our only option, so we ended up getting instant. I think some green perfectionists will complain that I got the pasta with the little plastic windows, but they can stay mad, no <laughs> offense. And the thing I'm awkwardly most excited about is this veggie broth concentrate in glass. I've been making my own veggie scrap broth for years every single week, and it'll be nice to try something new for once. This was less than $5 for how many cups of broth? Uh, 38 cups of broth, which is quite a bit, wow. So seriously a bargain if you typically buy those broths in Tetra Packs or don't have time to make broth from scratch. <sighs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and put everything away properly and sorry, but I'm legally required to insert a time lapse here. I don't make the law. And then we'll sit down and do a sort of post hoc meal plan trying to use everything we got. Okay, it's actually the next day. Um, we still had a few thingies left in the fridge from last week. So yesterday we had to clear out the fridge night and now we're starting off with a mostly blank slate. So it's time for the fun part. Usually I would make my mini plan on my phone, but my phone is currently being used to film a YouTube video for you nice people. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use my notebook. On this side, I just have a list of all the ingredients ingredients that we just bought at Food Lion for easy access when I make the menu plan on the other side. Okie doke, let's get started. You know Reed requires pasta at least once per week. So what if we made pasta with broccoli and some zucchini and uh, white beans in a sort of creamy lemony sauce? Lemony, garlic butter sauce. Even though there were no zero waste options for plant butter or nutritional yeast at the Food Lion, we do already have those items. So there's no use purposely making food that doesn't taste as good as it could, right? When I think of bell pepper, I immediately think burrito bowls. So we have instant rice, canned black beans, sauteed bell pepper, and we also got a red onion. Maybe we can spare a tomato. Ooh, an avocado. Perfect. And we got the green salsa. So let's do green salsa. Dang, I wish I got cilantro though. But we do have uh, green onions we grow in, so we'll just use those for garnish. What else did we get? Oh yeah, sweet potato. Mm -hmm. The only way I really like to eat sweet potato is cut in half lengthwise and then slathered in olive oil and salt and roasted cut side down. So the skin gets super crispy and the flesh is nice and golden. And since there's gonna be room left on the baking sheet, why don't we do some crunchy chickpeas? And if we don't use all the zucchini in the pasta, just slice that up and saute it. Zucchini, maybe. We also have um, some cabbage that we've had for a long time, but it's still good. So maybe a tangy cabbage slaw. Definitely need some kind of dressing. I think I'll just make my regular 30 second creamy lemony dressing. I don't know about you, but my mouth is already watering. 
and for sure have to make our world famous squash A. If you don't know what that is, definitely watch this video where I give the recipe for it. It's one of our favorites, go-to meal for sure. What goes in that? Um, tomatoes, canned okra, black-eyed peas, and the zucchini's already accounted for, but we will still have a summer squash. So obviously summer squash. And we usually serve that over rice, but we do still have some package-free cornmeal left over from several months ago. So I think we'll serve it on some nice polenta. Try something new. And I did see polenta in a paper slash cardboard at Food Lion. So it seems like an accessible enough option zero waste wise. Next, I want to think of a way to use those mustard greens. And I think they're pretty similar to turnip greens, which we just put in a soup last week. So I think soup is the way to go, especially since we just got those onions and carrots and better than bouillon uh, broth concentrate. And for protein, let's try butter beans and orzo. I think I'll have to look up a similar recipe because in my mind, I can't really visualize it, but I think it'll work. OMG, I forgot about the lettuce. Pound and a half of lettuce definitely calls for a salad, but let's make it a big salad. We'll probably have enough of that cabbage left. Pinto beans for proteins. Ooh, do we still have potatoes? Let me check. Potato collection has been ransacked, but I'm very married to the idea of putting roasted potatoes in the salad. So I think I'll just walk back to um, Food Lion and get some more. Roasty potats. What else? Um, radishes. Go ahead and throw that in there. And the rest of that dressing that I made for the sweet potatoes. So lemon vinaigrette. I hope this is fun, by the way. <laughs> Y'all probably aren't as nerdy as I am, but I hope you are. I get really into this in case you haven't noticed. If you are really into this, like I hope you are, I share our mini plans and grocery lists on Instagram a lot. So go follow me there. If this is helping you in any way, maybe it's giving you some inspiration, maybe some motivation, maybe some laughs, I don't know. I would be so grateful if you hit that like button and or subscribed if you haven't already. That'll just signal to me that you're into this sort of content and to make more of it, which I am very happy to do. Moving on. So we got two heads of broccoli. Already using one, so we have one left. Let me think of one that'll star the other head of broccoli. You know what? I think I'm gonna take to Pinterest and see if I can find some inspiration there. Yay, I found one that uses ingredients that we mostly have. It's Bakerita's Broccoli Chickpea Curry. It has onions, carrots, ginger, broccoli, coconut milk, peanut butter, and broth all things that we just bought from Food Lion. Actually, the one thing we're missing is spinach, but that's okay. And we'll have that with the instant rice. So how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Heck yes, seven dinners for seven days in the week. And then we'll be covered for lunch because I think everything we're making will have enough for leftovers. Love to see it. And um, for breakfast, we have uh, bananas and peaches. So maybe make some smoothies. And we also got that soy milk, which we cheated <laughs> to get, but who's counting? And then for snacks, I, I forgot about snacks, but we should have some carrots. Oh, and we have cherries, so. Snacks. Okay, I've been standing in this position for far too long. I wish you could actually like see what my body has morphed into in order to uh, accommodate this situation we got going here. So I'm going to relocate and then we'll talk about the pros and cons, I guess, of this experience shopping for zero waste groceries at a conventional grocery store. First, a little disclaimer here. Well, actually two. The first one is that there's a wasp in my kitchen. So if you see me freak out, that's why. And number two, there absolutely needs to be room for nuance. I try to opt for package for groceries whenever I can, but I do not think that that is the most important factor when it comes to being a consumer. 
I think ethics, food miles, health, accessibility slash budget, all outweigh zero waste. Buy the berries in plastic if no other option is available to you, okay? Don't do what I did and deprive yourself for three years. Oh God. Don't do what I did and deprive yourself for three years until you finally realize that your packaged raspberries aren't single-handedly causing the climate crisis. Perspective. But if plastic is the only issue that you have the capacity to focus on though, keep rocking that. So what were my main takeaways from this challenge? First of all, that I should not have slept on Food Lion. It's basically right in my backyard, which is a ginormous privilege when you think of the many, many neighborhoods that are food deserts. And I was kind of surprised how much I was actually able to get without excess packaging. Also, I was glad to see that this particular store uh, highlighted their plant-based options so that they were super easy to spot and they actually had quite a decent selection. So maybe next week when this challenge is over and we're not super strict about being zero waste, we'll go back and stock up on tofu and tempeh, all that good stuff. But will I make Food Lion my one-stop shop for groceries? No, and here's why. I feel like right now we're in the position to shop a little more locally, a little more ethically, and I think it's important to keep leveraging that wiggle room and our budget to uh, keep working toward that. Like doing our part. And Food Lion doesn't exactly cater to that type of customer demand. <laughs> for instance, they had zero fair trade options for things like bananas and avocados and coconut milk, which dis is disappointing, but isn't unsurprising for a conventional grocery store. I am conflicted though, because it's right there. And reducing emissions is a huge aspect of caring for the planet, but maybe driving five or 10 minutes uh, for mostly local food is better than walking a short distance for food that traveled 3,000 miles to get to you. I don't know, these are just some of the things I'm grappling with. And unfortunately, I don't have all the answers yet. Uh, maybe it's one of those things like with pretty much the rest of sustainability. There's so rarely a definitive answer, but I'd love to know what you would do and if you have any insights that I've overlooked. Oh, and by the way, the final tally for a week's worth of zero waste and vegan groceries for two came out to a little over $55, which I don't think is too bad um, for my region considering the cost of food has exploded recently. If you're into being low impact on a budget, might I suggest this video next? It's my rules to live by when it comes to being a not rich earth person. Tell me all your thoughts on leftovers Cause I really want to eat them